Okay, so here we will understand about India Sri Lanka fisherman dispute. Okay, first of all, we need to understand that Sri Lanka is a neighboring country of India. Okay, although Sri Lanka does not share land border with India, but like there are, I mean, like you know, there are maritime borders that is being shared by uh, you know uh, between India and Sri Lanka. Okay, so here. There has been multiple occasions where you know there has been dispute related to fishermen. Okay, so Sri Lanka is not very far away from India. I mean, like you know, people from from India, like from Tamil Nadu, the southern portion of India, they can reach Sri Lanka using boat within three hours. Okay, within three hours, they can uh, you know cross the uh, the international maritime boundary between India and Sri Lanka within three hours. So what happens like many people who are in the southern states, for example, uh, Tamil Nadu, okay, there are many districts in Tamil Nadu, around nine districts, okay, from where huge number of like fishermen are practicing fishing occupations, means like they are involved into fishing occupations and their livelihood is dependent upon fishing activities, okay. Many a times it has happened that many of these people have crossed over the maritime boundary. They have you know reached the you know uh, uh, the portion in Sri Lanka, and they have been arrested by the Sri Lankan Navy. Okay, similar was the case with India also. Many Sri Lankan people also you know crossed over uh, you know towards the Indian coastline, and they have been arrested by Indian Coast Guard. Okay, so now we need to understand about the dispute, the dispute that is happening between India and Sri Lanka because of the fishing related activities. Okay. India and Sri Lanka share historical ties. Okay. They share historical ties with one another regarding many things. Okay. So you might have studied in art and culture, right? You know, Ashoka has uh, sent his, you know, son, like he has sent his son to plant the tree, the first generation tree in Sri Lanka. Right, so to uh, to send the Dhamma missionaries right in Sri Lanka, so there is religious ties, there is historical ties. But the thing is, the uh, Sri Lanka, like being a country, like it was not very stable in like 1980s and all. So the country was undergoing huge economic crisis, and at the same time, there was tussle between regional powers in Sri Lanka, you know, to capture power. So it has led to civil war, okay, it has led to civil war. So like there are many people who are in the northern portion of Sri Lanka. If you talk about the northern, uh, you know, border of Sri Lanka in the northern portion, there are many people who are Tamil in origin. Tamil means like their ancestors, you know, grandparents, great grandparents, they have moved from Indian subcontinent means like from India to Sri Lanka in 90 uh, in uh, you know 1800 1900 and all means like you know way back i mean like their third fourth generation the the third fourth generation is residing now but like their uh, you know grandparents great grandparents they used to be indians they have migrated to sri lanka and they have started residing in the northern you know regions of sri lanka but what has happened because of the civil war that was happening in sri lanka so the sri lankan people okay sri lankan tamils okay so they have i mean like sri lankan people have started i mean like getting that sense like like many people who are residing in the northern uh, provinces of sri lanka they belong to india so there was a you know racial discrimination between people okay so because of that racial discrimination what has happened the Sri Lankan government has once, you know, declared that in the northern portion, I mean like, you know, in the northern portion of Sri Lanka, there will not be any fishing activities uh, uh, through, you know, boats, uh, like mechanized boats and all. So, Indian government and Sri Lankan government, like they were trying to sort out the issues of, you know, the fishermen related uh, things. I mean like, uh, locally in Sri Lanka, uh, like Sri Lankan Navy used to capture, I mean like they used to detain people who crossed over the uh, crossed over the boundary to reach sri lanka okay 
so the government has decided indian government has decided you know that they will resolve the issue with sri lanka so during that decision process what has happened one of the island which is known as kachcha thivu island okay this particular kachcha thivu island was ceded by india to sri lanka okay it was given by india to sri lanka to settle the maritime dispute okay so after it was you know ceded by you know the central government in india to sri lanka but still what has happened the people who were tamilian means like you know the southern uh, state people okay so they were not happy with this particular agreement between government of india and sri lankan government because they believed that kachcha thibu island belongs to the tamil state it belongs to india it should not be given to you know sri lankan government so this was one key concern for the southern uh, you know for the people who who are staying in the southern portions and at the same time so kachcha thibu island is a point of concern still okay it was given to sri lanka way back okay after an agreement was arrived between government of india and sri lanka and apart from this what has happened like if we talk about you know in tamil nadu right you know there are around 9 districts and in these 9 districts you know more than 3000 boats i mean like more than 3000 greater than 3000 crawling boats are there crawling boats are registered okay what happens like these are mechanized boats these are very you know big boats and they are used for the purpose of fishing okay each boat cost around 30 lakh rupees if we talk about one boat it costs you know around 30 lakh rupees or more than 30 lakh rupees and many such boats are registered and these boats what happens i mean like you know they do fishing activity through trawling okay they do fishing activity through trawling so i'll i'll talk about like you know how the trawling boats look like okay so what happens like you know because of this thing it is also hampering the ecological you know stability in the region ecological stability where in the gulf of mannar region in the region like you know uh, that surrounds the indian and tamilian water okay so this is the thing so many of these trawling boats are operated by machines and people are doing you know so much fishing activities over there and in many cases these boats cross over uh, the you know the international maritime boundary line okay it is known as international maritime boundary line okay so this was a line that was demarcated between india and sri lanka okay so what happens you might have come across this thing there is a law which is known as united nations convention on the law of the seas okay so internationally this is a law that is in place okay this particular law tries to establish an international you know order when it comes to you know settling the boundary disputes uh, maritime boundary disputes between different countries okay so it also demarcates some of the regions okay as like you know baseline territorial water contiguous zone uh, you know exclusive economic zone and high seas okay so if you read about the in, uh, the united nations convention on the law of the sea it has about you know 17 parts it has more uh, you know 320 articles and at the same time it has nine annexures annexures means additions to it so it is a very bulky document if we talk about the united nations convention on the law of the sea it is one of the bulky documents The, uh, that can be compared with the you know bulkiness of the constitution of india right so this particular convention tries to establish an international order okay where law and order can be maintained in the high seas in the region okay in the region that is you know that is in the waters and it specifically talks about you know the seas 
the ocean and all okay it it does not include lake and other regions that are considered to be inland water okay means let's consider there is a lake so that lake will be you know inland itself so like you know it talks about uh, like big water bodies where boundaries are shared between uh, two countries normally what happens like you know it talks about exclusive economic zone to be 200 nautical miles away okay from the baseline but like there can be situation where two countries for example the india southern portion of india and the northern portion of uh, like if you talk about uh, sri lanka okay this i mean the gap between these two country may not be i mean like you know uh, 200 nautical miles in that case what they try to do they try to you know demarcate a boundary and this boundary is known as international maritime boundary line okay the boundary between two countries that is in the sea i mean like you know there is no apparatus in place that can showcase that this is the line but this boundary acts as international maritime boundary line so to this uh, to the southern portion of it will be considered part of sri lanka to the northern portion of it will be considered part of india so here there has been dispute between india and sri lanka related to this particular line okay so this line was demarcated india had ceded kachathibu island to sri lanka but still that thing is in place why because when government of india you know enacted this particular legislation i mean like uh, when it had come into agreement with sri lankan government they did very lesser consultation with the local communities in tamil nadu means like you know the tamilian people in the southern portion they were very less consulted i mean like you know their concurrence was not taken by the central government at that time so still that issue is looming right still that issue is in place so here like you know i will show you some of the images that are there related to this okay so let's discuss about you know some of the uh, things okay so here the image that you can see right so this line the dotted line that you can see in the map okay this dotted line talks about india sri lanka maritime boundary line okay india sri lanka maritime boundary line so this is the boundary between india and sri lanka that you know separates the two countries right in the seas and here we have two areas one of the areas park way other is park strait right so these two belong to india right so many people what happens many people i mean like who are into fishing activities they cross over this particular region and they reach the you know uh, the nord northern portion of sri lanka okay so that's why the dispute is happening okay that's why the dispute is happening but in this article the author has suggested right what the author has suggested it has suggested that like what can be the way forward how we can settle the dispute amicably and at the same time how how we can you know seize this particular opportunity okay so let's discuss about that thing here now what happens this is a boat right this is a boat that does the fishing activity using trawlers okay this is the trawler so uh, so trawler is a kind of net right that is attached with one or multiple boats at at the same time okay so this is a trawler net so it is attached with one or multiple boats so these boats i mean like while moving uh, the nets also move so whatever fish come right they are uh, they are you know catched by this particular net fishing net so this is the uh, uh, trawler so here the issue that is arising now like many sri lankan people are of the belief okay sri lankan people are of the belief that government of india is facilitating a huge amount of automated you know uh, like uh, trawler related uh, fishing vessels i mean like you know these are automated trawler related fishing vessels and using these fishing vessels like you can do huge amount of fishing activity you can generate huge revenue right so it is a point of concern for sri lankan people right towards india so what should india do i mean like you know to maintain cordial relations with sri lanka one of the point that was highlighted by the author is 
like author has suggested that government of india should look forward for buyback scheme buyback means whatever trawlers are there with the private players right these trawlers can be purchased by the government okay it can be purchased by the government from these people and after purchasing the government should use it in such a manner so that like it does not cross over the um, international maritime boundary line that is there between india and sri lanka okay but like you know it just you know stops the uh, this part uh, these vehicles from crossing over the region what about the local people i mean like who are not well enough to do i mean like there can be many people who are just dependent on these fishing vessels they might be working as a laborer in these areas so the author has suggested a way forward for them also like you know in giving employment guarantees for those people i mean like those people who are involved in fishing activities locally they can be given some employment guarantee right in some different form so that is the thing so have you all understood what do we mean by trawling vessels means like these are fishing vessel that you know use the trawling nets these trawling nets you know move from the lower portion of the sea i mean lower portion of the sea and like they are attached to this thing as the boat is moving the nets will also move so it will you know catch the fishes okay so that's how fishing is done automatically so uh, means like this is a auto automated way the author is suggesting that instead of you know giving licenses to these trawling vessels the you know uh, the government should give licenses i mean like uh, to those vessels that are not using trawling thing okay so the uh, trawling ban is being thought about so here now let us locate where is kacha thibu island located okay where is kacha thibu island located so here this is the kacha thibu so this is the location of kacha thibu you can see right kacha thibu is located to the you know southern portion of international maritime boundary line okay southern portion of this thing means like it comes in the you know zone that is there with sri lanka right so that's why the government of india has ceded this particular island here the author his author has suggested like to address this particular concern of the tamilian people means like people who are in tamil nadu right they have a concern that like this particular island should belong to india and india should not have you know ceded this particular island to sri lanka so how the government can address this situation they can address this situation by taking this particular island in perpetual lease okay which is known as lease in perpetuity lease in perpetuity means for life long okay perpetuity means for for long time to come okay without any definite period okay lease means like you know government of india can pay rent for this particular island to sri lanka for uh, for you know infinite duration means like they can keep on paying the rent but the thing is the overall i mean the control over that particular thing will be with india but like legally it will be part of sri lanka i mean like you know it it is owned by sri lanka government of india is operating on it by paying lease but the author is suggesting the government of india can take this particular island in lease uh, you know in lease in per perpetuity means like for long time to come it can take in lease so that will address this particular situation also and at the same time late dr abdul uh, you know uh, dr apj abdul kalam okay he has also suggested an idea to address this thing what happens now the problem that is being faced is like many indian fishermen are crossing over the international maritime boundary line many tamilian uh, like many sri lankan fishermen are also crossing over this line so it is leading to huge dispute and at the same time like uh, you know there are concerns with these coastal communities on both the sides late dr apj abdul kalam he has suggested like there can be a way forward for this like uh, there can be alternate days like for example on one day 
right the indian people will you know fish over this particular region that can go beyond the international maritime boundary line and in other case in other day right the sri lankan people can do fishing activities over this region right they can also cross over this line to a certain i mean like you know area up to 5 kilometers maybe 5 nautical miles so that was one of the suggestion that was given by late apj abdul kalam right so that was the thing so now what is the issue one of the issue is sovereignty related to kacha thibu island okay so there is issue related to sovereignty with respect to kacha thibu island second issue is poaching and tra uh, trawling related issue okay so now so how we can you know address this particular situation so we have discussed like you know there can be multiple front that we we can do we can take this island in lease in perpetuity second thing is like we can renegotiate the previous terms that have uh, that was agreed upon between india and sri lanka and third thing that we can do is you know like we can uh, like control the licenses of these trawling vessels okay these are the things so any question on this sir if we using trawling method it may lead to spoiling the ecology as well as the resource looting right yes it is already doing it because that's why the paris government also is going to be right right so this trawling activities actually you know hampers the ecological diversity in the maritime region okay it hampers the ecological diversity in the maritime region so that's the thing right so here like what are the things that you should read you should learn about the united nations convention on the law of the sea you should learn little more about it and at the same time you should also learn in detail about india sri lanka relations okay here we talked about specifically on fishermen dispute fishermen issues with respect to india and sri lanka but there are multiple other areas also where india is maintaining healthy relations with sri lanka right so we should read about that thing also to understand this topic holistically mm -hmm.